El filibusterismo, lit. Spanish for filibustering. The subversive or subversion, as in the Loxon English translation, are also possible translations, also known by its English alternative title The Reign of Greed, is the second novel written by Philippine national hero José Rizal. It is the sequel to Noli Mi Tangere and, like the first book was written in Spanish. It was first published in 1891 in Ghent. The novel's dark theme departs dramatically from the previous novel. S. hopeful and romantic atmosphere, signifying the character Ibarra's resort to solving his country's issues through violent means, after his previous attempt at reforming the country's system have made no effect and seemed impossible with the attitudes of the Spaniards towards the Filipinos. The novel, along with its predecessor, was banned in some parts of the Philippines as a result of their portrayals of the Spanish government s abuse and corruption. These novels along with Rizal's involvement in organizations that aimed to address and reform the Spanish system and its issues led to Rizal's exile to Dapitan and eventual execution. Both the novel and its predecessor, along with Rizal's last poem, are now considered Rizal's literary masterpieces. Both of Rizal S. novels had a profound effect on Philippine society in terms of views about national identity, the Catholic faith and its influence on Filipino's choice, and the government's issues of corruption, abuse, and discrimination, and on a larger scale, the issues related to the effect of colonization on people's lives and the cause for independence. These novels later on indirectly became the inspiration to start the Philippine Revolution. Throughout the Philippines, the reading of both the novel and its predecessor is now mandatory for high school students throughout the archipelago, although it is now read using English, Filipino, and the Philippines' regional languages. Plot Thirteen years after the events of Noli Mi Tangere, Crisostomo Ibarra returns to the Philippines under the guise of Simon, a wealthy bearded jewelry tycoon sporting blue-tinted glasses, and a confidant of the Captain General. Abandoning his idealism, he becomes a cynical saboteur and agitator, seeking revenge against the Spanish-Philippine system responsible for his misfortunes by plotting a revolution. Simon insinuates himself into Manila high society and influences every decision of the Captain General to mismanage the country's affairs so that a revolution will break out. He cynically sides with the upper classes, encouraging them to commit abuses against the masses to encourage the latter to revolt against the oppressive Spanish colonial regime. This time, he does not attempt to fight the authorities through legal and peaceful means, but through violent revolution using the masses. His two reasons for instigating a revolution are at first, to rescue Maria Clara from the convent and second, to get rid of the ills and evils of Philippine society. A now grown-up Basilio visits the grave of his mother, Sisa, in a forested land owned by the Ibarra family one evening. Near the gravesite, Simon digs for his buried treasures. His identity is discovered by Basilio when the two happen to meet up just as the latter leaves Sisa's grave to go home. Simon spares Basilio's life and tells his story of his past, then asks him to join in his planned revolution against the government, egging him on by bringing up the tragic misfortunes of the latter's family. Basilio declines the offer as he still hopes that the country's condition will improve. Basilio, at this point, is a graduating medical student at the Ateneo Municipal. After the death of his mother, Sissa, and the disappearance of his younger brother, Crispin, Basilio heeded the advice of the dying boatman, Elias, and traveled to Manila to study. Basilio was adopted by Capitan Chiagu after Maria Clara entered the convent. With the help of the Ibarra's riches and Capitan Chiagu, Basilio was able to go to Colegio de San Juan de Latran where, at first, he is frowned upon by his peers and teachers because of his skin color and his shabby appearance but is able to win their favor after winning a fencing tournament. Capitan Tiago's confessor, Father Irene is making Captain Tiago's health worse by giving him opium even as Basilio tries hard to prevent Capitan Chiagu from smoking it. He and other students want to establish a Spanish-language academy so that they can learn to speak and write Spanish despite the opposition from the Dominican friars of the Universidad de Santo Tomas. 
With the help of a reluctant father Irene as their mediator and Don Custodio's decision, the academy is established, but this turns bad as they will serve, not as the teachers but as caretakers of the school. Dejected and defeated, they hold a mock celebration at a panchiteria while a spy for the friars witnesses the proceedings. Basilio, however, did not show up during the event. Simon, for his part, keeps in close contact with the bandit group of Cabessing Tales, a former Cabeza de Barangay who suffered misfortunes at the hands of the friars. Once a farmer owning a prosperous sugarcane plantation, Tales was forced to give everything he had owned to the greedy, unscrupulous Spanish friars and the church. His son, Tano, who became a civil guard, was captured by bandits. His daughter Julie had to work as a maid under Hermana Panchang to get enough ransom money for Tano freedom, and his father, Tondong Silo, became mute. Before joining the bandits, Tails took Simon's revolver while Simon was staying at his house for the night. As payment, Tails leaves a locket that once belonged to Maria Clara. To further strengthen the revolution, Simon has Quiroga, a Chinese businessman hoping for a consul position in the Philippines, smuggle weaponry to the country, using the latter's bazaar as a front. Simon plans to attack during a stage play with all of his enemies in attendance. On the afternoon of the day the attack is supposed to happen, Basilio informs Simon of Maria Clara's death in the convent during the morning hours of the day. A heartbroken Simon abruptly aborts his plan in order to mourn her death. A few years after the mock celebration by the students, the people are agitated when disturbing posters are found displayed around the city. The students present at a panchiteria noodle shop are arrested on charges of agitation and disturbing the peace. Basilio, although not present at the mock celebration, is also arrested. Capitan Chiagu dies after learning of the incident. But before he dies he signs a will, unknown to him, it was forged by Father Irene. Chiagu S. Will originally stated that Basilio should inherit all his property, but due to this forgery his property is given in parts, one to Santa Clara, one for the Archbishop, one for the Pope, and one for the religious orders, leaving nothing for Basilio to inherit. Basilio is left in prison as the other students are released. A high official tries to intervene for the release of Basilio but the Captain General, bearing grudges against the high official, coerces him to tender his resignation. Julie, Basilio's sweetheart and the daughter of Cabessing Tales, tries to ask Father Camora's help upon the advice of Hermana Bali. The two travel to the convent, but during a rendezvous, Camora tries to rape Julie, due to his long-hidden desires for young women. Hermana Bali tries to intervene to stop Camora's immoral act but is outmatched by the friar. Julie, finding herself trapped and being cornered by the friar, jumps from the convent's window to her death. Simon arranges for Basilio's release and manages to get him out of confinement. After Basilio is released, Simon tells him about Julie's ordeal with Camora and her suicide. Basilio decides to join Simon's revolution. Simon then tells Basilio his plan at the wedding of Paulita Gomez and Juanito Pelaez, Basilio's hunchbacked classmate. He plans to conceal an explosive charge of nitroglycerin inside a pomegranate-styled kerosene lamp that Simon will give to the newlyweds as a gift, during the wedding reception. The reception is to take place at the former home of the late Capitan Chiagu, which is now filled with explosives planted by Simon. According to Simon, the lamp will stay lighted for only 20 minutes before it flickers. If someone attempts to turn the wick, it will explode and kill everyone. Important members of civil society and the church hierarchy Inside the house. Basilio has a change of heart and attempts to warn Isagani, his friend and the former sweetheart of Paulita. Simon leaves the reception early as planned and leaves a note behind. Initially thinking that it is simply a bad joke, Father Salva recognizes the handwriting and confirms that it is indeed Ibarra's. As people begin to panic, the lamp flickers. Father Irene tries to turn the wick up when Isagani, due to his undying love for Paulita, bursts in the room and throws the lamp into the river, sabotaging Simon's plans. He escapes by diving into the river as guards chase after him. He later regrets his impulsive action, the explosion and revolution could have fulfilled his ideals for Filipino society, he had contradicted his own belief that he loved his nation more than he loved Paulita. 
Simon, now unmasked as the perpetrator of the attempted arson and failed revolution, becomes a fugitive. Wounded and exhausted after being shot by the pursuing Guardia Civil, he seeks shelter at the home of Father Florentino, Isagani's uncle, and comes under the care of Dr. Tibercio de Espadaña, Doña Victorina's husband, who is also hiding at the house. Simon takes poison in order not to be captured alive. Before he dies, he reveals his real identity to Florentino while they exchange thoughts about the failure of his revolution and why God forsook him, when all he wanted was to avenge the people important to him that were wronged, such as Elias, Maria Clara, and his father Don Rafael. Florentino opines that God did not forsake him and that his plans were not for the greater good but for personal gain. Simon, finally accepting Florentino's explanation, squeezes his hand and dies. Florentino then takes Simon's remaining jewels and throws them into the Pacific Ocean with the corals hoping that they would not be used by the greedy, and that when the time came they would be used for the greater good. Characters Below are some of the major and minor characters in the novel. Simon, Crisostomo Ibarra in disguise, left for dead at the end of Noli Mi Tangere. Ibarra has resurfaced as the wealthy jeweler, Simon, sporting a beard, blue-tinted glasses, and a revolver. Fueled by his mistreatment at the hands of the Spaniards and his fury at Maria Clara's fate, Simon secretly plans a revolution to seek revenge against those who wronged him. Basilio, son of Sisa and another character from Noli Mi Tangere. After his mother. S. Death, he became a vagabond until Captain Chiagu took him in out of pity and hired him as a houseboy in exchange for sending him to school. In the events of the book, he is a graduating medical student who discovered Simon's true identity and befriended him. His girlfriend is Julie. Isagani, Basilio's friend and one of the students who planned to set up a new school. He is very idealistic and hopes for a better future for the Philippines. His girlfriend was the rich and beautiful Paulita Gomez, but they broke up once he was arrested. Despite this, his love for her still endured. He sabotaged Simon's plans by removing the lamp that contained explosives and threw it in the waters. Cabezing Tales, Cabeza Teleforo Juan de Dios, a former Cabeza de Barangay, Barangay Head, of Sagpang, a barangay in San Diego's neighboring town Tiani, who resurfaced as the feared Luzon bandit Matanglawin. He is the son of Tondong Silo, and father of Julie and Tano. Don Custodio, Custodio de Salazar y Sanchez de Monteredondo, a famous journalist who was asked by the students about his decision for the Academia de Castellano. In reality, he is quite an ordinary fellow who married a rich woman in order to be a member of Manila's high society. Paulita Gomez, the girlfriend of Isagani and the niece of Doña Victorina, the old indio who passes herself off as a peninsular, who is the wife of the quack doctor Tibercio de Espadaña. In the end, she and Juanito Pelaez are wed, and she dumps Isagani, believing that she will have no future if she marries him. Macarig, one of Isagani's classmates at the University of Santo Tomas. He is a rich student and serves as the leader of the students yearning to build the Academia de Castellano. Father Florentino, Isagani's godfather, and a secular priest, was engaged to be married, but chose to be a priest after being pressured by his mother, the story hinting at the ambivalence of his decision as he chooses an assignment to a remote place, living in solitude near the sea. Florentino also harbors great hatred for the corrupt Spanish friars. He offered shelter to Don Tibercio de Espandaña when the latter was hiding from his wife, Doña Victorina. Juli, Juliana de Dios, the girlfriend of Basilio, and the youngest daughter of Cabessing Tales. To claim her father from the bandits, she had to work as a maid under the supervision of Hermana Panchang. Eventually, she was freed but committed suicide to escape Father Camora's attempt to rape her. Juanito Pelaez, a favorite student of the professors. They belong to the noble Spanish ancestry. After failing in his grades, he became Paulita's new boyfriend and they eventually wed. Doña Matutine, Victorina de los Reyes de Espadaña, known in Noli Mi Tangere as Tibercio de Espadaña's cruel wife. She is the aunt of Paulita Gomez, and favors Juanito Pelaez over Isagani. 
She is searching for her husband, who has left her and is in hiding. Although of Indio heritage, she considers herself as one of the peninsular. Father Camora, the lustful parish priest of Tiani, San Diego's adjacent town who has long-time desires for young women. He nearly raped Julie, causing the latter to commit suicide to escape. Ben Zay B., the pseudonym of Abraham Abane, a journalist who believes he is the only one thinking in the Philippines. Ben Zay B. is an anagram of Ibanez, an alternate spelling of his name. Placido Penitente, a student of the University of Santo Tomas who was very intelligent and wise but did not want, if not only by his mother's plea, to pursue his studies. He also controls his temper against Padre Milan, his physics teacher. During his high school days, he was an honor student hailing from Batangas. Hermana Panchang, Sagpang's rich, Pusakal, gambler. She offers Julie to be her maid so the latter can obtain money to free cabessing tales. Disbelieving of Julie and her close friends, she considers herself as an ally of the friars. Tibercio de Espadaña Don Tibercio is Victorina de Espadaña's lame husband. He is currently in hiding at Father Florentino's. Father Irene, Captain Chiago's spiritual advisor. Although reluctant, he helped the students to establish the Academia de Castellano after being convinced by giving him a chestnut. The only witness to Captain Chiago's death, he forged the last will and testament of the latter so Basilio will obtain nothing from the inheritance. Quiroga, a Chinese businessman who dreamed of being a consul for his country in the Philippines. He hid Simon's weapons inside his house. Don Timoteo Pelaez, Juanito's father. He is a rich businessman and arranges a wedding for his son and Paulita. He and Simon became business partners. Tondong Silo, father of Cabessing Tales and grandfather of Tano and Julie. He raised the sick and young Basilio after he left their house in Noli Mi Tangere. He died in an encounter on the mountains with his son Tails, when he was killed by a battalion that included his own grandson, Tano. Father Fernandez, the priest friend of Isagani. He promised to Isagani that he and the other priests will give in to the students' demands. Sandoval, the vice leader of Macarig's gang. A Spanish classmate of Isagani, he coerces his classmates to lead alongside him the opening of the Spanish Language Academy. Hermana Bali, another wealthy gambler in Tiani. She became Julie's mother figure and counselor, helped to release cabessing tales from the hands of bandits. Father Millan, a Dominican friar who serves as the physics professor of the University of Santo Tomas. He always becomes vindictive with Placido and always taunts him during class. Millan is based on, inspired by an ill-mannered Dominican friar who was Rizal's anatomy professor in Santo Tomas. Tadeo, McCarrig's classmate, he, along with the other three members of their gang, supposedly posted the posters that thanked Don Custodio and Father Irene for the opening of the Academia de Castellano. Leeds, an American who holds stage plays starring severed heads, he is good friends with Simon. Tano, Cabessing tales his elder son after his older sister, Lucia died in childhood. He took up the pseudonym. Carolina. After returning from exile in the Caroline Islands, and became a civil guard. He was among the battalion killed his grandfather, Silo, who was part of a group of an attacking rebels. Pepe, Don Custodio's supposed girlfriend. A dancer, she is always agitated of her boyfriend's plans. She seems to be a close friend of McCarrick. Governor General, the highest ranking official in the Philippines during the Spanish colonial period, this unnamed character pretends that what he is doing is for the good of the Indios, the local citizens of the country, but in reality, he prioritizes the needs of his fellow Spaniards living in the country. Father Hernando de la Ciba, a Dominican friar introduced in Noli Mitangere, now the vice rector of the University of Santo Tomas. Hexen, classmate who had no idea on the happenings occurring around him. He suggested that they held the mock celebration at the Panchiteria. 
Father Bernardo Salva, former parish priest of San Diego in Noli Mi Tangere, now the director and chaplain of the Santa Clara Convent. Captain Chiagu, Santiago de los Santos, Captain Chiagu is Maria Clara's stepfather and the foster father to Basilio. His health disintegrates gradually because of his frequent smoking of opium, which Father Irene unscrupulously encourages despite Basilio's attempts to wean his guardian off the addiction. Eventually, he died because Father Irene scared him about the revolt of the Filipinos. Book Notes, Summary in English, The Reign of Greed Adaptations 1991. El Filibusterismo. A Filipino Tagalog musical adaptation of the novel staged by theater company Tangalang Filipino with libretto, book, and lyrics by Paul Damole and Jovi Maroy, and music by Ryan Kayavyab. It premiered in 1991 at the Cultural Center of the Philippines and was directed by Nanan Padilla. References <laughs>